The following is a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society. What is the Great White Throne Judgment mentioned in Revelation? What is it all about? Is the believer going to be there? Who's going to be judged there? These are some questions we're going to answer today on Grace in Focus, this radio and podcast ministry of the Grace Evangelical Society. Our website, if you want to get to know us better, is faithalone.org. There you will find our articles, blogs, videos, other things that we've produced, as well as our bi-monthly published magazine, also called Grace in Focus. That's at faithalone.org. Now Bob Wilkin and Philippe Sterling to talk about the Great White Throne. Well, Philippe, I've got a question here for us, and it's a two-parter, and it's from someone named E-Z. Those are his initials. It's not... This is not going to be an easy question. It it (laughs) is a question from E-Z. It's an easy question, but it's not an easy question. Yeah. He's got two-parter, and these are genius questions. I really like these questions. Someone's thinking way outside the box. This person says, you argue that a believer shall not stand before the great white throne judgment because the believer, quote, shall not come into condemnation, John 5, 24, or that could be translated, shall not come into judgment. He goes on, why cannot we make the same argument and say that the unbeliever also shall not stand before the great white throne judgment? Because he or she, quote, is already condemned, John 3, 18. So we'll talk about the second part of his question in a minute. But let's turn to John three eighteen and see what it says. I'll go ahead and read John three eighteen. He who believes in him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Okay, now I think what E.Z. is saying, and I'm not sure if he knows Greek, but what we see in John 5.24 is the noun chrysis for uh, judgment, and here the verb form, uh, the cognate of the same word is krino, to uh, judge. And so what you have here in 3.18 is that the one who believes in him is not judged. So it does go to John 5, 24. Although the reason it's translated condemned is because of verse 17. I didn't, the son of man didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. And then the last part of verse 18, uh, but the one who does not believe in him has been judged or condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. What I would suggest is John 3, 16, 17, and 18 tells us that one state is irreversible and the other state is reversible. The state that's irreversible is everlasting life. So once one has believed, he has everlasting life. And he will never perish. He will never be condemned. That's a done deal. But the one who has not believed, there's still the opportunity Right. I to, would to I would use, I would use the word state, not mm. in the sense of California, Texas, Arkansas, but in the sense of a condition. The condition the unbeliever is in is his state is that he is condemned. But that's a reversible position because it, obviously if he believes, then John 3:16 applies mm-hmm. to him. And if he ceases believing, Well, then we can talk about that. That's part two of EZ's question. But before I get there, let me say that when he talks about the great white throne judgment, that's Revelation 20, 11 to 15. Anyone who's read the Bible and read the book of Revelation knows that Revelation 20, 11 to 15 is yet future. Unless you're a full preterist, (laughs) in which case there are some people that would believe that's already passed. Uh, And so, of course, heaven and earth has to all pass away first. According to the full preterist, yeah. We're already on the new earth, yeah. (laughs) I don't understand full preterism. I don't understand how somebody can say the whole book of Revelation's already passed. But 
99.9% of all professing Christians believe that the book of Revelation tells us about the future in in chapters 4 through uh, 22. And that chapter 20 tells us that at the end of the age, from a dispensational standpoint, after the millennium and the beginning of Revelation 20, then all of the unsaved dead are going to be resurrected and brought to Jesus, either in heaven or on earth, I think on earth, same place uh, he will be after the millennium, and they will be judged, and anyone whose name is not found in the book of life, or anyone not found in the book of life, is cast into the lake of fire. Well, so whatever John 3, 18 is saying doesn't contradict Revelation 20, 11 to 15. People often call the great white throne judgment the final judgment. Uh, okay, m- maybe so. But the truth of the matter is, uh, believers aren't going to experience any final judgment, John 5, 24, or even John three eighteen. But unbelievers will, unless they move out of that condition of being an unbeliever. And once they do, now they're no longer already condemned. So the response to what EZ is saying is that one of these conditions is irreversible, irrevocable, and the other is reversible and revocable. It's the only way to make sense of these three verses. Otherwise, nobody could ever be born again. Because you're born an unbeliever, right? Well, if the unbeliever is already eternally condemned, and there's no way to escape that condition, (laughs) then there'd never, ever be anybody who was born again, right? Yes. And of course, that goes back, maybe, you know, in his case, still the ideas behind Calvinism. Right. And some aspects of Calvinism to one is, you know, predestined to either. You no, know, right. Life, and, life or death. And, and we're not Calvinists yeah. and we're not Arminians. We're Bible believers. Now, let me go to part two, because he's also clever on part two. EZ says, if a believer who received everlasting life by believing in Jesus later stopped believing in Jesus, why cannot we apply John three eighteen and say he is condemned already? Are you following his question? Yes. It's a good one. Yes. He's basically saying if the condition of being condemned already is not believing and a person goes from believing to not believing, then wouldn't they now be in the condition of being condemned? And why do we say that doesn't work? Again, going back to what you stated, Bob, you know, the matters of uh, irrevocability and and irreversible and and reversible you right know, you know all so it's still applying that consistently you know to the entire context and that's part of what he's doing is taking a verse out of context in essence he know, is too. taking a verse out of context and the other part of it is when you think about it John three sixteen seventeen 17, and 18 is not saying that the person who perseveres in faith until his last breath has everlasting life. It's saying the person who believes in Jesus at that very moment has everlasting life. I, re- I wrote a blog earlier this week, and what I suggested, if you hold the view, which, by the way, many conservative Bible teachers hold the view that Ha pistuon in John 3.16, the one who believes refers to continuous belief, lifelong belief. Well, if you hold that view, then you don't believe people are born again at a moment in time. In fact, I have a quote from a leading Bible scholar who says that, a New Testament scholar, and he said, a person is not born again at a moment in time, but over a lifetime of belief. Well, if that's true, then guess how many believers there are above ground on earth today. Uh, they are known today. Like there we, would be, we refer that to the atheist question, there would you know, be, a couple podcasts ago, right. you know, too. There yeah. would be zero, right? Yeah. Because not a single person would be born again because nobody had yet persevered yeah. to the point of death. The only people that would have everlasting life would be six feet under. Yeah. Well, actually, they would be with the Lord in heaven because they were 
lucky enough or enduring enough to persevere to the end and win their everlasting life. No, our eternal destiny is not a prize to be won. According to John 3.16, the moment we believe we have everlasting life. And so what easy is mistaking is that somehow if the believer stops believing, he becomes an unbeliever. Uh, I believe uh, R.B. Theme had uh, a booklet uh, in which he talked about the unbelieving believer. And he said that if a believer falls away, he still falls in the category of ha pistuon, the one who Mm -hmm. believes. Just like John the Baptist, ha baptizon in Mark's gospel, hasn't baptized anybody in 2,000 years, yet we still call him John Mm -hmm. the Baptist. Why? Because that's who he is. It doesn't matter if he hasn't baptized anybody in 2,000 years. He's still John the Baptist. In the same way, if a believer ceases believing, he's still the believer because that's his state. Once That's an irreversible, irrevocable, permanent, eternal condition. Yeah. So the, the condition on unbelieving is not certified until the point of death, actually. So I like that. Hebrews 9.27, you know, right. uh, there is appointed for men to die once, and after that there comes judgment. But for the unbeliever, the final state is determined at the time of death. Okay, I love that. Essence. You use the word certified. Right. Okay, we certify elections, right? We, yeah. After the election is over, we have a commission, and it says we've certified the election. In fact, the January 6th commission and all that was over certification of an election and uh, were people, you know, challenging the election uh, wrongly, etc. And certification takes place according to John 3.16 when? At the moment of belief, certification takes place. We have everlasting life. So from God's perspective, who is omniscient, he knows every single person on earth today who's born again. There's no surprise to him at who's born again and who's not. And he knows which born again people have fallen away. And he even knows which born again people will fall away. But he also knows that no born again person is going to become an unborn again person. Yeah, it's like, there's what is it, seven up is the uncola? Well, there's no <laughs> unborn again. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, EZ. You've asked uh, genius questions. I really love them, and I hope you all will meditate and think on these things. And in the meantime, keep Keep grace grace in focus. Would you be interested in some free e-books on topics you hear on this program? Well, if you are, you need to come visit us at faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. They're designed to help you mature and grow in your understanding of the faith and scripture. So come visit us at faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. Would you like to have a chat with Dr. Bob or one of the guests here on the program? Let me tell you how to reach out to the team. You can get us on our email address, which is radio at faithalone.org. That's radio at faithalone.org. On the next episode, we will be answering a number of questions sent in by one of our listeners. Join us next time, and until then, let's keep grace in focus. The proceeding has been a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society.